if you've been ripped off. I felt very cheated, cheated and conned. But are struggling to get back your hard-earned cash. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. Help is at hand from the sheriffs. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement. We have an outstanding writ of control. They're back with a brand new team. Determined to get you the money you're owed. You're wasting our time. I'm now going to call a locksmith. Acting with the High Court's authority. He's the one with a court writ. So he's the victim, not you. They have the power to remove assets. We're here to retrieve full balance, if not remove goods otherwise. To ensure you're not shortchanged. The sheriffs being our last saviour and hope. Every year, sheriffs in England and Wales recover your unpaid debts totalling £100 million. I've got my money back, and now we can put this matter to bed. Coming up... Air conditioning engineer Khan Thomas was left struggling when a client wouldn't pay his bill. When a customer like this doesn't pay up, it really does take its toll. We've got premises expensive, we've got engineers to pay, and it's hard. When the sheriffs come calling, staff at the debtor business are served up a surprise. We're here to collect £1,788. Today? Today, Today, yes, yeah. A former employee is left drastically out of pocket after a cleaning company failed to pay her wages. But when the sheriffs come calling... Hello? They're not welcome. And after selling a car with a defective gearbox... Sir, let's not twist this. He's the victim, not you. A car dealer drives a hard bargain. Right, if I get the car back here, you'll pay 7,850 quid. It's a busy day in the capital, and enforcement agents Luke Peacock and Carl Hardingham are pursuing a debt owed by a bar. We're in North London tonight, looking for a company called Five Miles London Limited, um, looking to recover a balance of just shy of £2,000. Um, I'm into a claimant zero degrees AC Limited, so it could be a supplier, um, unpaid invoice or something. Zero Degree AC Limited specialises in air conditioning and ventilation and is run by Khan Thomas. We uh, carry out installations, uh, maintenance and service for banks, high street chains, embassies and stuff like that, uh, down to like the small size uh, businesses, ice cream parlours and um, that sort of thing. Khan was recently contacted by the owner of Five Miles Bar and Nightclub, which was having problems with one of its units. When our engineer attended, he found that um, uh, one part of the system uh, was missing. The second part of the system was kind of corroded, a bit old. And we did advise the client to replace the whole thing. It needs a full new installation, which would have like a brand new warranty, three or five years. However, uh, customers sometimes don't listen to recommendation. Reluctant to spend extra money, the owner instead wanted to keep the ageing system and just replace the missing or faulty parts. We kind of hammered it into him that, you know, it's not going to last. We shouldn't really work with this. And he said, no, 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 let's just uh, go with it. Just, just try it. And at the end of the day, if a customer's insistent, 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 then uh, we'll just uh, do what they want. Zero Degree completed the work, but it wouldn't be long before they heard from the bar again. We received uh, a phone call just a few weeks after we attended. The customer was upset and angry on the phone, saying his system had broken down again. It's an emergency, please send your engineers now. So we sent our engineer back uh, for free, out of courtesy. And uh, obviously, uh, his findings were just as we suspected. And it was the old component of the system had uh, conked out. Again, the client didn't want to replace the system, and the engineer was sent away. But that wouldn't be the end of the matter. So basically, when it came to payment time, uh, the customer didn't want to pay his bill. He was just dismissing everything, and he was just repeating himself saying the system doesn't work, why am I going to pay you? The system doesn't work. 
which is quite ridiculous, you know, because everything was explained in the beginning and it was his choice to go ahead and repair an old system that was on its way out. I reminded him, do you remember what you said? And he was like, no, 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 you're unprofessional. And just dismissed me. The unpaid invoice totaled more than a thousand pounds, money Khan's company could ill afford to lose. And when a customer like this doesn't pay up, it really does take its toll. We've got premises expenses, we've got engineers to pay, and that can be like an engineer's taking uh, for one week. Sometimes we need to dip into our own savings and stuff just to cover like company expenses, and it's hard. Unwilling to accept the non-payment, Khan took Five Miles London Limited to court, and when the company didn't submit a defence, he won the case. We would have thought when someone gets taken to court that that's when they take it seriously. But in, in this scenario, we didn't get paid still. Um, so that's when we decided um, to give it to the High Court. My last hope to reclaim our cash. In Tottenham, fighting their way through the rush hour traffic, Luke and Carl are nearing their debtor's address. We're expecting a bar to obviously be open. Um, should be full of punters by this time of night. So uh, hopefully we'll get in and uh, see what we're faced with. I think it's just on the right as we get down here. I can see the logo now, so they're clearly still trading. The bar seems to be located on an industrial estate. We're taking the van in? Yeah, just park up inside. That's it in there. In this one? Yeah. Yeah. Aside from the alcohol stocks, drinking venues are not typically rich in assets. The sheriffs are hoping they'll be able to persuade five miles to pay without any resistance. Morning. Afternoon, even. High Court Enforcement Agents, Mr Peacock, colleague of Mr Hardingham, here with a writ that's been issued at the High Court against Five Miles of London Limited. Who's in charge right now? Well, I'm the manager. But, uh, You're the manager? The uh, is the owner around? No. OK, can you get him on the phone for us, please? Uh, yeah, I can try. We're here to collect £1,788. Well, right now? Right now. If there's no payment made, we're going to pull a recovery truck and remove goods from the property. You're not going to physically remove anything? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Today? Today, yeah? Today, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. Is there any way we can avoid this, though? The answer is no. Realising the situation's serious, the manager quickly gets the owner on the phone. What's his name? Mark. Mark, lovely. Hello. I'm very well, thanks. But the pleasantries don't last long. The manager says he was planning to appeal the court judgment and doesn't think he should have to pay. Well, you're more than entitled to obviously take this matter to court, but if payment isn't forthcoming, then we have a job to do. I appreciate that, but at the start of this conversation, you told me that you've seen correspondence about it. There's been no offer of payment forthcoming. It's just been a case of working out how you're going to appeal it. The debtor says he hasn't got the money and isn't willing to borrow it. But under government rules, a refusal to pay results in extra fees. Well, OK, so we're now going to carry on with our job, taking control of assets here. The balance now increases to £2,382.32. I would suggest speaking with um, any business partners or associates, family members or friends, uh, to try and raise the funds. We will have to remove goods this evening if you don't pay. Later, will the owner of Five Miles London Limited come up with the money he owes Khan Thomas, or will the sheriffs be forced to remove his goods? Few of us can afford to be left out of pocket. If you've been let down by faulty goods or substandard services and are struggling to get your money back, you can use the county courts to recover your hard-earned cash. Around two million claims are made every year in England and Wales and can be filed by post or online for a small fee. Both parties in the case will be asked to submit evidence and you may have to attend a court hearing. If you win your case, a county court judgment or CCJ will be issued against the debtor. If they still don't pay, it's time to call the sheriffs. It's late morning. 
Enforcement agents Ben Dyram and Miles Whitworth are in the Leeds area. We're off to Strategic Facilities Management Limited. It's a cleaning company and we're going there for just over £3,000. It's a rural address just outside Leeds. It comes up as a, as a farm. I would imagine it's, a, it's an office site outside in an outbuilding or something like that. Pretty area, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's this one. It's down there somewhere, right? I think. Strategic Facilities Management Limited was successfully sued by an employee over missing holiday and sick pay. It's now down to the sheriffs to get her what she's owed. In here, yeah? Yeah. Love the glass, isn't it? Oh, nice. Strategic. Straight in front of you. Oh, yes. Well spotted. Although this looks like a residential property, the branded van suggests they've come to the right place. Got a clump in the back. And having identified a potential asset, the sheriffs are keen to make sure it can't be driven away. Tempted to block off the driveway, do you reckon? I'll park in here, mate, yeah. In circumstances like these, creative parking can be just as effective as a clamp. With the asset secured, the sheriffs now need to find someone to speak to about the debt. You don't knock loud enough. I'm gentle. Quite like anyone's about, does it? It seems there's no one here. It's a difficult one, mate, isn't it? It's weird. Car the out in if the Range Rover's still here. Hello? Running out of options, Miles tries the door. Yeah, step in, mate, see if there's anybody in. Hello? Somebody is in after all. We can't leave at the moment, mate. No, I'm sorry, I just really have to do this at the moment. We can wait five minutes. No, no, you please just go outside the door now, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be with you in the moment. We'll just wait where we are, thanks. We'll Cheers. Wait here, thank you. High Court enforcement agents are legally allowed to gain peaceful entry to a property to look for assets, and once inside, cannot be made to leave. This is an office here. Paperwork here. Strategic Facilities Management Limited. Yeah, we're in the right place. So this is the office. Seems very agitated. Keep this nice and calm. We are waiting. Please don't walk around my home. Please make sure that there's no filming in you, please. Camera's outside, mate. Yeah, sure. The man finally comes downstairs, wanting to know why the sheriffs are here. My name's Miles Whitworth. I'm from the High Court. And this is Ben Dyram, my colleague. And also from the High Court. I'm here regarding um, your company, Strategic Facilities Management Limited. We did not. The man claims he didn't hear the door. He also says the debtor company is run by his wife and isn't based at this address. Looks like it is. This is the office. The paperwork there that identifies it as an office. Could you get your wife on the phone? Saying his wife can't be reached, the man wants to know more about her debt. The amount owed currently is £3,025.96. If that's not paid within the next 20 minutes or so, it will go up by a further £600 pounds. Before he pays anything, the director's husband first wants to be sure that the sheriffs are legit. This is a High Court Enforcement Officers Association ID there. And this is a copy of the writ stamp there. It is against Strategic Facilities Management Limited, um, but by all means, if you wish to call the police or anything like that, or if you'd like to check us out on the bailiff register, we're both named on there. Satisfied that Ben and Miles are who they say they are, the man agrees to make the payment on his wife's behalf. 
Excellent. The bank details on the second page. And a few minutes later, the money owed to the former employee is settled. Thanks for sorting that out. Thanks for sorting it swiftly. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks to the sheriffs exercising their full legal powers. We only entered the property but it was because we tried knocking and you know walking around to draw attention to ourselves and nobody was forthcoming. If the doorway is closed but not locked, we're entitled to enter a building that way. He has paid it for his partner. I'm sure the company will pay him back eventually. It was a good result at the end of the day. Chap wasn't too pleased that we were there, but you know he sorted it out. The former employee who hadn't been given her holiday and sick pay will now get the money awarded to her by the courts. Strategic Facilities Management Limited told us that the employee's missing pay was due to an administrative error. They say that as soon as they were made aware of the debt, it was paid in full, and they plan to appeal the judgment. Second-hand car sales are regularly a cause for disputes in the county courts. And it's the sheriffs who customers ultimately turn to when a judgment ruled in their favour isn't paid. Collecting these debts is rarely straightforward, as enforcement agents James King and Mark King know only too well. This morning, they're on their way to a small village in the East Midlands. Today we are in Leicestershire, and we are enforcing a writ of control against a Mr Matthew Allen. The claimant bought a used car from vehicle dealer Mr Allen through an online auction site. Not long after the purchase, the car developed a gearbox fault, and for the past two years, the claimant's been trying to get his money back. We believe that he pressed his money back when it wasn't forthcoming. He went to the county court and obtained a judgment. Uh, that judgment was passed to us and been uplifted to a bit of control. It's normally quite easy to get leverage because there's obviously cars on the on the forecourt that we can take control of. Um, however, we need to ensure that any goods that we do take control of belong to the defendant, Matthew Allen. Uh, cut for sale. What's that now? Dribbling. It's down here. The sheriffs have arrived at what they believe to be the address for Ashwell car sales. It's all locked anyway, isn't it? Everywhere's locked up. It doesn't look like your average car dealership, and there's no sign of Mr. Allen. He's a claimant, he purchased the car, so he met the gentleman at a petrol station, and then he brought him round to here to let him test drive the car. So we're not 100% sure if he actually trades from here or if he just stores the cars that he's selling from here. Mark's on the hunt for any clues suggesting these vehicles belong to Mr. Allen. I was just looking at anything that might have their, their name on, to be honest. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tidy motor that's up for sale, isn't it? Even the dashboard's all shiny, which just been clean. Possibly that one as well. Indications suggest some of the cars are for sale and may belong to the debtor. But the sheriffs need more concrete evidence before they take control of any goods. We're waiting for details uh, of his eBay account, which is being sent across, and hopefully that'll list some vehicles, and then at least we can seize them. Um, hopefully that, sh that 15 plate Shogun will come up in it. A few minutes later, James is sent a list of vehicles Mr. Allen is advertising online. We've got a Bugatti T35, 16 and a half grand. Bugatti, isn't it? We've got a 16 plate Volkswagen Golf. 15 plate Mitsubishi Shogun. Exhibit 15 A. 15 plate Mitsubishi Shogun. Exhibit A. The sheriffs suspect the Mitsubishi Shogun could fetch over eight and a half thousand pounds enough to pay the customer what he's owed and cover their fees. Confident he could have some leverage, James calls the debtor. Uh, 
completely on. Hi there, um, I'm calling regarding the black Shogun that you've got for sale. Excellent. Um, is that Matthew Allen? My name's James King, I'm an enforcement agent. We've currently got the vehicle immobilised. Are you able to come down and arrange this payment for this outstanding route of control that you have? OK, if you want to come down, that'd be fantastic. Thank you, babe. He's on his way down now. Later. And I've told him that many times, bring the car back. When the sheriffs come face to face with Mr. Allen, will the customer's two year wait for his money finally be over? Oh, no one's going to hand over money, so I'll give him all that money right. and then I never see a car again, so I've just been. Well, right. then you take him to court. Oh, he's the one with a court writ. Yeah. Against right. you. Can get one so of them. he's the victim, yeah. not you. In North London, Luke and Carl are in a bar called Five Miles. Its owners were taken to court after failing to pay air conditioning engineer Khan Thomas for repairs to their system. You've told us you can't pay and you're not willing to make any effort to raise the funds, so we're now starting an inventory of goods. The debtors refused to pay, so has already incurred an extra £600 in fees. The balance currently outstanding sits at £2,382.32. Realising his costs are escalating, the boss now says he will try to raise the money after all, but only the earlier amount. I'm not here to barter with you. On the notice of enforcement which you've received, it, it outlines the enforcement costs and fees which will be incurred. If you told me, hang on five minutes, I'll be there with the cash or make a bank transfer, then we wouldn't be following this process. It's £2,382 and we're going to carry on with what we need to do. That means identifying potential assets to remove. Code for it or model is SL1210MK2. Such as the DJ decks and a laptop. Much to the manager's annoyance. Do you have look, one? look, can, can, can I please, look, please, please, can I just explain to you just home moments, OK? But these goods have been taken control of. If they're removed, I'm not, no, we're I'm not, not going to take people's control phones control. and things like that. I understand. Unfortunately, there are assets on the bar. Back, OK, if this is your laptop, you need to provide us with sufficient... This is something that you're going to need to... As pressure on the business mounts, the boss is soon back on the phone. Hello? Hi. You've managed to get 1800. OK. So we, we're still in the same predicament whereby we still require the remainder. Well, I'm happy to give you some time, that's no problem. Let's have a chat with the manager and see what cash is on site right now. But as I've said on many occasions, the only thing that works for us is full payment, OK? He's saying he can't raise any more, so whatever cash is here, he's saying he can't raise any more on top of that. With just £600 still outstanding, the staff hand over the contents of the tills. All right, we'll take that and we'll cash that. There's 190 there, Luke. So what are we up to? There's 190 plus 60, yeah? That's for 250. When the boss bank transfers another 100, the sheriffs are inching towards the finish line. So we're still looking at £232.32. £32. As small as we make this balance, it doesn't take away the fact that we still have to collect the full balance. So even if you got the balance down to £50, we're still not going to walk away without the £50. That's how the court process works. OK, we're going around in circles again. The £232 is still due. With only a small amount left to pay and enough assets to cover it, the sheriffs won't settle for anything less than payment in full. Half an hour later, there's progress. All done? All done. I don't know if he's told you, but he's just transferred the other £232. Oh, he hasn't right. told me, my officer just called. Despite previously saying that he couldn't raise the money, the owner has cleared his debt to Zero Degree Limited. Thanks for your help. All the best. Take care, guys. All the best. See you later. Debtor could have saved himself a lot of costs if we just dealt with it in the first instance, but as much as he wasn't happy with the claimant actually taking it to court, um, he then wasn't happy with the process that we had to follow. Great result in the end, but 
like we say, something that could have been wrapped up within 15 minutes, half an hour. For claimant Khan Thomas, the outcome is a welcome relief. So we heard back from the sheriffs and uh, it's good news. And they've recovered the money in full, and that's including the court fee. We didn't actually think we were going to see one penny of that money. So yeah, we were really happy. Great to see uh, the money in our account. In Leicestershire, James and Mark are at Ashwell Car Sales. The owner, Mr. Allen, owes over £5,000 to a customer who was sold a car with a defective gearbox. Hello, sir. Mr. Allen. After clamping a Mitsubishi Shogun, the debtor, Mr. Allen, has just turned up. We have an outstanding bit of control. We I need. Know all about it. Yeah, you yeah. know all about it. Sold in the car, and he'll complain something about seat not working right. So bring it back then, I'll give you money back. The fact, why didn't you challenge it with the courts? Because I moved and I knew nothing of this, this, this thing until I had a letter here. Right. And that was it. And the letter went into the letterbox in there, which no one ever uses. Right. Yeah, do you want to make the payment then? Well, I'm not going to pay that, am I? And then I don't see the car. It ain't well, I mean, like you, it, it is how it kind of works. Mr. Allen acknowledges the debt, but because he didn't attend court, the judgment was ruled against him by default. The customer is under no legal obligation to return the faulty car. But with Mr. Allen refusing to pay, James turns his attention to potential assets. None of these vehicles are mine. None of them. So OK, but obviously... I get every single person who owns them to come down here. No, don't belong to me. So right. We've obviously got... You set our selling them, aren't you? Yeah, I, get a, uh, I work on a um, commission. Right, I see. They'll return. So, so who's the owner of the Shogun? So I can ring them now and they'll come down with their paperwork. He's saying that they all belong to individuals. And what the individuals do is they give him their car to sell and he makes a commission off of selling it. So he's gone off now to um, provide some evidence that Shogun behind us belongs to a third party. Mr Allen returns with some paperwork for the Mitsubishi Shogun. But will it be enough to satisfy the sheriffs? It's obviously a logbook. Yeah, which is in her name. Which is obviously this document is not yeah. proof of ownership, as no. it says clearly at the top. Also, if you bought the vehicle and you was a garage, you'd rip that off and sell that. With that bit, that's why it's a full logbook, because it's her vehicle. Right, well, logbook's not proof of ownership. We've covered that. Even know that that's right. so, so, sir... You're looking at an eBay account, aren't you? Do you even know that belongs to me? I'm looking at a Gumtree account, sir. Oh, Gumtree? How do with you know your, that belongs to me? With your, your phone number on it. So all I need is reasonable assumption. All I need is reasonable assumption that them goods belong to you, well, right? Matters. The fact that you're selling them is pretty reasonable that they belong yeah, to you, it's a sale right? Return. Don't belong to me, like the logbook says. It's sale right? Return. Logbook says this isn't proof of ownership. Seizing a vehicle that doesn't belong to the debtor could prove to be a costly mistake for the sheriffs. So taking control of goods here is too risky. Let's move away from us actually removing anything. Yeah. Let's talk about you paying this outstanding money. But I'm not doing it. Once I see that car, he won't bring it back, because I don't even think it exists anymore. You're on about Technic Thailand with his wife. Sir, let's not twist this, all right? Well, At the end of the day, he's the one there. with a court writ yeah. against oh, you. So he's them. the victim, yeah. not you. Oh, no one's going to hand over money, so I'll give him all that money, right. and then I never see a car again, so I've just been. Well, right. then you take him to court, no, like no, he has to you. And I've told him that many times, bring the car back. No, I don't want to. Right. It bloody don't exist. You get the car back sir, here, I'll sort it. Sir. There you go. Right, if I get the car back I'll here, you'll pay 7,850 yeah. quid. Yeah, because the car don't exist. All right, I'll, get, I'll, I'll call now. Any chance of getting the customer his money now rests with James persuading him to return the faulty car. It's James King. Hi there. Um, he's able to make the payment, but obviously he wants the car back. He's trying to say that the car doesn't exist and you live in Thailand. Um, that's, so I, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of wild stories. For us, obviously, in the middle of this, you know, today what I would like is a, a picture of the car just to show him it does exist, because then that just cuts that to the ground. Love it. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Right. 
you've got a picture of the car coming in 10 to 15 minutes with a picture of the latest version of the Shropshire Star. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah. Despite Mr. Allen's initial reluctance, James's perseverance seems to have paid off. So, we would agree that we meet up in Shropshire, week's time, you get a low loader, you get the car back, you settle our bill, and we all walk away from this, yeah? Yeah, good to get a little bit. I think at one point he was getting the amp, and I think he was even considering just driving off. Obviously, it's a trip from uh, Leicestershire here to Shropshire. Overall, very happy with the result. Just, I'll be a lot, lot happier once this is resolved in two weeks' time yeah. in Shropshire. Thanks to the sheriffs, after a two-year wait, the customer should finally get the money he's owed. If you've won a county court judgment but are still out of pocket because it hasn't been paid, for £66 you can get the case transferred up to the High Court, which will issue a writ for enforcement by the sheriffs. Can you please come to the door? Here with the High Court writ today. We will be executing today, if not removing goods. These High Court awards have to be paid, and the sheriffs have unique legal powers to ensure you get the money you're owed. Here regarding a High Court writ of control. We can't get off the site today without full payment. If you shut the door, us, we'll get a locksmith there. Why are you preventing us access? And there's no limit on the size of debt they can pursue. £8,691.22p. £40,386. So you can just do the bank transfer. If they're successful, they'll recover your money and costs from the debtor. Okay. Brilliant. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. As well as their own fees, which are set by the government. We'd have to take the case to the next stage and we'd have to get removal trucks here to remove your goods. If the sheriffs can't get your money, you'll be asked to pay another £90 to cover their costs. Today, enforcement agents Ben and Miles are in the northeast on Ben's home turf to visit another second-hand car dealer. Okay, so today we're off to Kirkfell Cars in uh, Darlington. We're attending with a High Court writ for just over £4,750. Uh, we're going on behalf of a private individual. Kirkfell Cars owes money to a customer who was sold a faulty car. In court, the company director failed to provide a defence, so the judge found in favour of the claimant. I know Darlington well. Uh, I've driven past the garage quite frequently, and there's always nice uh, vehicles on the forecourt and inside the garage. So we do have uh, room for manoeuvre there. You know, if we have to take control of a vehicle uh, with a clamp, then, then so be it. Hopefully payments forthcoming, um, but one way or another we'll uh, get the result on this case. With the tidy-looking garage offering a good selection of moderately priced cars, it's a promising start. Just open it. Thought it was open there for a second. It says it should be open. Yeah. To the sheriff's frustration, the garage appears to be closed. <laughs> Just bring the car back. Have you got an appointment? What time? So it should be open then. Okay. The garage is supposed to be open at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Um, there's nobody here. There is a customer here dropping a car off to get it repaired. Um, so I would have thought somebody would have been here, but it's closed at the moment. So probably give him a phone call. Um, see if he's coming down. But as Ben prepares to put in a call... Ring the mobile? Yeah. The sheriff's presence hasn't gone unnoticed. We've drawn attention already, haven't we? Yeah. So the, the garage opposite, so... Give him a call. Come. Oh. Here's a mobile number. Good morning. 
hi there. Uh, who am I speaking to, please? David, my name's Mr. Dyer. I'm an enforcement agent, and I'm uh, down at uh, your garage. Much to Ben's relief, he's got the Kirkfell car's owner on the line. I'm here with the High Court writ. How, how far away are you? The garage owner is saying he's at home. Oh, you're living here, so it'll be, what, 30 minutes or something? Well, obviously, we need you to pop down so we can uh, have, a, have a chat and get this sorted. But the debtor's claiming he's got builders round, making attending the garage difficult and feels the sheriffs should have made an appointment. We don't work on an appointment system, David. We, uh, we don't have to announce that we're coming. There will have been letters sent, uh, which you know gives you warning that we would attend if the payment wasn't sorted. The owner now says he'll come down to the garage. Right, right. So are you head what time are you heading down? Because obviously we, uh, we can't hang about forever. But anyways, I'll give you, I'll give you a good 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes to contact your builders and uh, if you get back to me. Thank you. Cheers. It's coming down. OK, so I've just spoken to uh, the owner of the garage. Um, he's uh, got an appointment with some builders or something at home at the moment. So he's going to come down here as soon as he possibly can and uh, try and resolve this. The sheriffs have the power to force entry if they believe there could be enough assets inside to cover the debt. <sighs> Today's job hasn't exactly gone to plan, but Ben's keen to give the debtor the benefit of the doubt and wait it out. Yeah, out of courtesy, we've waited on site for the, uh, the man to come down to, to sort this out. I said we're not going to hang about much longer, so I suggest that he gets himself down here as soon as he can. How long till it goes to level two? <laughs> yeah, I want this job finishing today. I've travelled 95 miles to be up here. I don't want to come back. I like to stay in West Yorkshire as much as possible. <laughs> Felt like leaving West Yorkshire to come up to the North East. It's a bit cold up here. After kicking their heels for over an hour and a half. <coughs> you got the paperwork, Matt? Very nice car, isn't it? Yeah. A man who appears to be the company director finally pulls up. If you just turn up. Yeah. Well, you've had letters from us in the past. Uh, well, I'll show you what I've got. There's notices of enforcement. Yeah, let's go well. inside. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. no problem. The company director heads inside to fetch paperwork he believes will stop the sheriffs in their tracks. Have a look at it. That, that's all I've got. That's why I, I am gobsmacked while you're here. Right. Mm -hmm. Struck out on the 25th of June. What it says on there, it's only been struck out because they haven't received any fees. So I don't know if that's from yourselves or from no, him. I don't, I, I don't know it all works. No, so... Miles and Ben need to get to the bottom of whether the debt is actually enforceable or whether today's 100-mile trip to the northeast has been for nothing. Miles puts in a call to the office. Hi. Um, can you just look at some paperwork I've just sent a picture of? It says that it's been struck out and all hearings are vacated because the court fee hasn't been paid. Will the sheriffs proceed with enforcement or will the documents throw a spanner in the works? The defendant here at Kirkville Cars has sent his defence in, but he's not sent the appropriate fee for the judge to have a look through the defence so he can get his day in court. So it's been, I think it's been struck off. Um, his application at the end of the day has been struck off. This means the sheriffs are within their rights to collect the outstanding debt owed to the unhappy customer. It is, it is, and I understand your frustrations. However, it did actually say on here, please note if you have not already paid the hearing fee, this must be paid no later than 4 p.m. on the 24th of June. So... That's why it's been struck out. That, that's why it was struck out. Your hearing was struck out. The garage owner says he didn't know anything about paying a fee for the hearing. No, you, you, you do. Because it's not free. I understand your frustrations, but, but it, is, it does say on that paperwork that it needs to be paid, basically. So, David, we are here today for £4,762.16. pence. We'll have to look at possibly removing goods then, David, which will in incur further costs. 
Not keeping on top of the paperwork has cost the garage owner extra money in interest and fees. He now says he can get some money together, but not until this afternoon. It needs, it needs, I mean, we've been here an hour and a half now, so, or more in fact, so we, we will require that to be paid before we leave the premises. If it isn't paid within sort of 30 minutes time, it will go up to 5,300 and about 50 pounds. So it'll go by a further 594 pounds. We can't hang about forever. We, we've been here over an hour and a half. Because that writ does entitle us to take control or remove goods to cover that debt, as I've just explained to you. It's worded there, we are commanded by the courts. So we've, uh, we're speaking to the defendant inside and it's been going a bit back and forth about the court work. The courts aren't there to walk you through these situations, you kind of need to get yourself through them and um, you've got to make the ball move a bit. Um, unfortunately it's not and um, we're, that's why we're here today and we're just trying to get him to be forthcoming with full payment. Back inside there's been some movement. The debtor is now saying he can borrow £2,000, which will cover just under half the debt. David, all due respect, we, we hear a lot of this. A lot of the times we hear this and we never see the money and we've got Nothing to come back. And it's, it's just stuff that we can't, we can't walk away from, unfortunately. We've got obligations from the court. After some tough negotiations... We need it cleared, really, David, to be honest. The debtor manages to up his offer to 3,000 in cash, with the rest to be paid by bank transfer. Right, all bank details are on here, David. Um, well, thank you for sorting that out. Yeah, we'll, uh, go and leave you in peace. Yeah. All right. Cheers, David. Cheers, David. Thank you. It may have taken hours of waiting around and negotiations, but Ben and Miles have managed to get the customer all of his money back. Good result, Matt. Out of the blue, um, the defendant managed to get a garage across the road to uh, lend him or loan him uh, three grand in cash, which is uh, right here. Um, he lent, loaned him that and he's paid the rest on bank transfer. Uh, yeah, it's a bit frustrating. We were at the property for about two and a half hours in the end. Um, it's a long time for us just to be stood around doing nothing. Thanks to the sheriffs, the customer who was left out of pocket has finally got the money he was owed. Took a while, but... Good job done. The owner of Kirkfell Cars told us he has worked in the motor trade for 40 years and has always prided himself on his customer service. After initially repairing the faulty car at no cost to the customer, he offered to exchange the car. He didn't deliberately ignore the court paperwork and had planned to defend the claim. He was under the impression that it was struck out and was shocked and surprised when the sheriffs turned up. Since filming, in the enforcement against the other car dealer, Ashwell Car Sales, Mr. Allen broke the agreement he made with James and Mark. He refused to refund the customer's money in return for the faulty vehicle, and the customer is still out of pocket.